Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelsey. I'm Kelsey Ogie here on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, helping you, <laughs> helping you to get on your hands, practicing your yoga, finding a little bit more space in your day, making you feel a little better in your skin. Today we are going to be focusing on one of my favorite things to do and it's arm balances. I'm going to go over some of the most basic beginner arm balances, how to get into them, how you can modify them, and maybe a few drills if you're not quite ready to get into them, the tools that you'll need, props, and then just help you feel a little bit more comfortable there. So I really got into arm balances right from the get-go with yoga, which really maybe shouldn't be considered a beginner thing to do, but I love the strength, the challenge, the, the balance, all of it. And so I would get into these Instagram challenges, a lot of them were arm balances, and that's how I got strong at doing yoga. I wanted to be able to do these cool moves, these cool postures. And so I just kind of threw myself into it. I watched videos on how to do it and I just did it again and again and again. And you know, I will say that probably is the number one tip to being able to do arm balances in yoga. It's a willingness, a desire to want to do them, be okay with failing, get back up and try it again. And that in itself is a huge way to build strength and confidence being on your hands and on your mat. So hopefully after today, you'll feel a little bit more comfortable, at least in crow, maybe in headstand and some of these fun postures. And then from there, you can start building a lot of awareness and also a lot of strength. So let's just go ahead and get started. I really like it if you are already very warmed up. This is something to do towards the end of your practice when your shoulders are warmed up, you've really you've used your wrists a lot, your hips are open, your hamstrings are lengthened. So I would definitely recommend that you do that. Do your sun A's, your sun B's, your full workout. And then when you're not too tired, but you're really feeling it, then start challenging yourself to get on your hands. All right, so let's go ahead and start with my very first arm balance that I ever learned and that is crow pose. So it's also called Bakasana. Well, technically it's called Kakasana in Sanskrit, but a lot of people call it Bakasana. It gets a little confusing, but crow pose. Okay, so the entire body is balancing on the hands. A nice way to start with crow pose is to start in a really deep yoga squat. So toes out, heels in, really, really sink in through the hips, lift the pelvic floor, lift the chest. Once you're in this position, you are really already set up to go into your crow pose, especially if you reach forward, get that crow traction through the shoulder blades where you're rounding through the upper back. Now you are really there. Get the knees all the way up on the tops of the triceps. Now, a lot of times you can't quite get there and they're more towards the elbows. That's okay, but really ideally, I would have you have knees almost to the armpits. From there, what we're going to do is put the hands down on the ground. You want them set up just like you would if you were gonna be doing a handstand or a plank position. Get the hands down nice and comfortable. Fingers spread, but not too wide. Make sure that you're anchoring down at the base of the thumb and the index finger. So this spot right here, that is the money spot. That's where you're gonna be really activating, finding your strength and your balance. Don't be rolling to the pinky finger side of the hand. Now let's shift forward. So the hips come up nice and high. As the hips come up high, we're gonna find even more protraction through the shoulder blades, rounding in that upper back. Low belly pulls in. Shift forward even more onto those tiptoes. Now the elbows are going to bend back now. You don't want them to flare out to the sides. So hands down, I don't want this. Elbows in as if there's a imaginary yoga block between your arms. All right, I'm gonna go back to the sideways view again. Really find that weight, base of the index finger, protract those shoulder blades, low belly pulls in, we shift forward. Gaze is slightly forward, so don't tuck your head, don't strain your neck and lift it all the way up. We wanna look a couple inches forward of the fingertips. Now, if this is enough, and you're like, wow, I'm already tired, putting the weight into my hands and out of my feet, then that's where you're gonna stay and you're gonna work on finding your strength and your endurance. If you're ready for a little bit more, let's lift one leg and lower and lift the other. Maybe do that 10 times. And if that's not too bad, let's just hold one leg. So let's lift the right leg, point the toe, keep those elbows drawing in towards each other. Keep that protraction, keep that belly pulled in. Let's switch sides, right toes down, left toes up. Keep shifting forward a little bit. All right, toes down, sit back, yoga squat, 
Soften the shoulders, shake out the wrists. Now, I know a lot of people have some fear in crow pose that they're going to roll forward, smash their face. Grab a pillow, grab a blanket, a couch cushion. I'm gonna let this represent my pillow here. And you're gonna put it down where your face would hit the floor. And that has happened. I have forward rolled out of some crow poses, that's okay. If you do, make sure you tuck the chin and around the spine and roll. <laughs> Go with that forward roll, make sure there's not a bunch of breakable things in front of you. Give yourself that space. All right, let's try it again. Hands down. Now remember, as you're in this position and you're balancing on your hands, your fingers, those are your brakes. So get ready to grip your mat, either with these little tiger fingers or spider fingers, whatever you wanna call them. So up on the tippy toes, little belly pulls in. The protraction of the shoulder blades is already happening. Look forward. Let's lift one leg. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Elbows in. 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Let's switch. Left toes down, right toes reach. 10, 9, 8. Keep pushing. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one. All right, so now we're gonna do it once more, but let's try to float both toes at the same time. So a nice trick that you can try if you are not quite ready to float both toes at the same time is grab your yoga block. I like cork, you can use whatever you want, but cork is nice because it doesn't roll away on you. I use infinity straps, yoga bricks, they're very solid, uh, but you use what you got. Use a book if you want, that'd be totally fine. So if you're not quite ready to float both toes on their own, but you want to get used to putting the weight into your hands, then try resting, just hovering resting your toes on your block. You can see I'm already starting on top of my block, that way I know I have the right spacing. Elbows in, knees are high, shift forward. Now if you're balancing your toes on the block, you're just balancing on the tops of the toes. You don't want to rest your feet on them, they're just there to help you hover, but if you're ready, let's float the toes and hold. Number gaze is slightly forward, rounding that upper back, gripping the mat with your fingertips. Low belly is pulling in. Let's hold it for five more, three, two, and one, go ahead and come down. So, block is totally optional, but it is a nice way that if you're not ready to float the toes, it's a great step in between, but always whenever you're using props, remember props are temporary. Do not get attached to them. They're just there to help you move through one transition to the next, and then we get rid of them as soon as we're able to, because it's really all about you doing it on your own. I mean, if you were at a hotel for the night, you wanted to practice, you don't want to say, oh, well, I didn't do my practice. I don't have my block. I don't have my mat. I, I can't do it. No, no, no. Yoga is all about you and your breath and your strength. So just use the prop as a transition piece. All right, so that was your crow pose. Super amazing position to get into if you're just beginning to find that way in your hands. So let's take it down a little bit and take it into baby crow. So it's a lot like regular crow pose, but we're much closer to the ground. On um, this one, very, very similar, but now we're on our forearms. So instead of being up on the hands, now we're down on the forearms. Make sure that they are shoulders width. So once you get the arms down, grab opposite elbow, Yep, your shoulders width, arms down flat again. Now, if you have to interlace the fingers, you can. But like I said, how can you grip the ground if your fingers are already interlaced? So try it my way. If it's not happening, you can always go back and interlace again. All right, so let's find that compression, getting into this tight little ball here. And in this position, it's really nice because it's easy to protract the shoulders and find that roundness. Pull the belly in, climb the knees very, very high, because we don't have much space. You gotta get them up as high as you possibly can. And now we're gonna shift forward and balance on the triceps, just like we did before, but now the hands are down. So this is nice if you had a wrist injury or something. Again, gaze is slightly forward, a little bit past the thumbs or straight down if you need to, but you don't wanna strain your neck and tuck your chin. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Let's start with just lifting one leg right now. Shift forward, let's lift the right toes. Five, four, three, two, and one. Let's switch right down, left up. One, two, three, four, and five. Good. 
So that's baby crow. Of course, we're gonna try it with both toes off the ground. And you know, I think a lot of people, what they worry about with this one is that they're gonna smash their face. And honestly, you're really close to the ground. So if you fall, you're gonna be okay. So take the fear out of it. You can put your block, or not your block, your towel or your pillow right down there if you're really worried about it. But I'm telling you, so many people hold themselves back from doing these yoga postures, from doing these inversions because they worry about getting hurt. Don't let that fear hold you back. You could do great things if you let that go. All right, so again, let's find that compression. I got my towel down so I don't have to worry about heading my face. I'm going to lift and hold. Think about lifting the toes together, but if you're not quite there yet, one at a time is okay. And then lift the toes up, maybe get the heels to touch and keep pushing, keep pulling the belly in, all right? So here we go, shift forward, toes up. One, two, three, four, five. Look, my towel's there, so I'm okay. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, so a fun thing with both crow and baby crow is that you can vinyasa right out of them. So what that means is you would either step or jump back to your chaturanga position, up dog and then down dog. And that's a fun way to move through your practice with an arm balance. It does take some practice and time. So if you're very brand new to crow pose or baby crow, please just get really strong there first. Feel super stable, be able to hold it 15, 20 seconds. After you're able to do that, then we can start talking about coming out of a pose like crow and right into your vinyasa. But if you're able to do that, and then you can stay here for a while, then you can try really pulling the core up, looking forward, step back. Of course, if you step back with the right, make sure you practice stepping back with the left. And as you get stronger, you can shoot the legs back together. This is what that would look like in crow, and then I'll also show you in baby crow. So in crow pose, remember to look forward, pull the belly in, gently shoot the legs back, look forward, elbows in. Make sure you are very comfy with your asana first before you try to move out of that. Little bit harder to vinyasa out of baby crow because there's no space. You could hit your knees on the ground, but that's why it's even more important to find the strength through your core so that you can keep your hips lifted. So you're down here in baby crow. We shoot right back to a forearm plank. All right, so that is it for our crow poses. Let's move on. The next one that I have is elephant trunk. Elephant trunk is a great beginner pose, but you gotta have some really open hips. So make sure you've done your hip openers and your hamstring openers. Shoulders are feeling nice and strong. So in elephant trunk, if you're not quite used to working in an L-sit and holding your weight with your own hands, you may want a pair of blocks. If you want your blocks, you'll put them at about thigh height, not down by the knees, not all the way up by the hips, the tops of the thighs. So with elephant trunk pose, let's go ahead and lift up one leg, get that external rotation through the hip, and then when it's nice and open, then bring that leg up over the shoulder, as high as you're able to, because once it's up there, it's gonna wanna whoo, slide down. And the closer it is to the shoulder, the easier it's going to be. Get your hands on your blocks if you need them. And then we're just going to push up. Maybe that left heel or whichever leg is down doesn't leave the ground yet. That's okay. You're still building that strength. Maybe do that five times. As you push, take the shoulders away from the ears, find that height. And of course, whatever we do on one side, we have to do on the other. It's very natural to want to only do it on the good side, the easy side, but yoga is all about that balance, finding that equanimity from side to side. So make sure you give each side equal amounts of time. So very, very high on the tricep, kind of a little squeeze behind the back of the knee to keep it there. Push and lower. The blocks definitely help to give you a bit more height that way you're able to get your bum up and off the floor. Maybe hold at the top to help you find that strength, lowering down very, very slowly. That lower is called a reversal or the negative. And whenever we work on lowering slow, it helps us build the strength to lift back up a little bit easier. 
As you get good at this, you will ditch the blocks. You won't always need them. So let's go ahead again, hang the leg over the shoulder, hands down, just slightly forward of the hips. Squeeze that bent leg over the tricep. Engage the straight leg, not only reaching through the heel and the toe, but pulling that femur bone deep into its hip socket. Hands are down nice and firm. Again, pressing down between the index finger and the thumb. That's where our strength is. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna drag my hips through my hands, pull back, and then maybe the heel lifts. Once you have found your strength and your lift off, I find that it's always very helpful to go to the breath. Maybe you wanna count the breath. Maybe you just want to focus on the inhales and the exhales, but get your mind very, very calm because now you want to start to notice what is happening in the body, what's happening through the core, what's happening through the legs, what's engaged, and where do I need to focus and work. So we need to get ourselves very calm when we are working in arm balance and inversions because it's already a little bit chaotic, a little bit stressful. So calming the mind, calming the breath allows you to focus on those small details, which is really where all the magic is. So, Use your breath to help you get nice and calm. Now let's work a little on the left leg. We didn't do that. So, or if you did the left, make sure you do the right. Hang as high as you can. If you can't lift the hips yet, that's okay. Or lift the heel yet, that's okay. Lift the hips, hold. Maybe repeat that five to 10 times. Another option you could do, put that block back down. Put the heel on the block. Get it nice and straight. And lift. And you just want to kind of hover the heel. You don't want the block to do all your work because like I said, the goal is to get off your prop and do it all on your own. Nice. All right. So either doing reps, lifting the heel or hold nice and steady for a count of 10 up to you, but just stay there, be steady. Notice all the little details. Once you have gotten very comfortable in your elephant trunk pose, now it's time to move on to the next step, which is eight angle. Alrighty, so you've already come into your elephant trunk pose. Leg is hanging over the shoulder. We've got that little L-sit thing going on. We're lifted. Now we're going to move into a angle. So I bring up the straight leg and I bring it behind the hanging leg. Now this is the first step. If you can do that, perfect, because now you're holding all the weight. And now I'm going to drop the chest, bend the elbows back, legs go out to the side. And I look towards the toes. You can see why it's called eight angle. Kind of looks like an eight shape or an affinity shape. Now that one's a little bit <clears throat> more difficult because you get very close to the ground with your chest. Make sure as you drop the chest down, elbows bend back and not flare out. Elbows bend back, just like in your chaturanga. If your elbows are out wide, you're much more likely to hurt your bicep tendon, your rotator cuff, and you're gonna get a shoulder injury. So elbows in, chest is broad, navel is pulling towards spine. Of course, we got to work both sides, right? Which one did I do? Did I do this one? I already did that one. So now I have to hang the left leg over the shoulder. Find that elephant trunk pose. Get that lift off. Great. Now I'm going to bring the straight leg behind the hanging leg. Cross the ankles. If you can hold that, you're ready to go. Drop the chest forward. Elbows bend back. Gaze is towards the toes. And breathe. Hold. And when you think you can't hold it anymore, give it two or three more seconds, find your strength. Maybe come back through elephant trunk and lower. These were not made to be easy. They are made to be challenging. That's where you're gonna find your courage and your strength. All right, so what's next? Headstand. Okay, this is another amazing posture. And there's a couple different variances that people like to take. Actually, there's a lot of variances and headstand, but today we're just gonna be focusing on two, either the bound headstand or the tripod headstand. I personally think that tripod headstand is a little bit easier, but I'm gonna show you both because I want you to find out what's easier for you. So I'm gonna start on my hands and my knees. This is something that, again, if you feel like you're going to roll forward, give yourself lots of room, put a pillow or a couple pillows behind you, um, do it on carpet, you don't want to do it with your back up to a wall. If you roll into it, you're going to be all smashed, hurt your neck, hurt your shoulders. It's no good. 
So if you're going into Bada Sheer Shots in a bound headstand pose, just like we did before in Baby Crow, arms are down. We're gonna grab opposite elbow. Now I know how far shoulders width is. Keno McGregor says do that for five years as a new yogi. And then hands down, interlace the fingers. I'm gonna make this little basket for my head. You see the thumbs are open, pinkies are more together. This is the basket for my head. I'm gonna put the crown of my head down and the thumbs wrap up towards my uh, back of my skull, towards my brainstem, towards my neck. Pinkies are closer to the ground. Now, you see I tucked my toes underneath and I lifted my hips, I straightened my legs. Push, push, push out of the shoulders. In the beginning of the bound headstand, just pull one knee in. Pull just one knee in, activate the core, keep pushing out of the shoulders. Maybe see how it feels to just kind of hover one straight leg off the ground. Let's switch sides. Straighten out the, the bent leg, my left leg. I'm gonna bend the right now. And just hover the left toes off the ground. Keep pushing out of the shoulders. You have to keep pushing the whole time. Let's go ahead, bring both toes down. Rest on the shins. Maybe sit right into child's pose. Rest your neck and your head and your spine for a moment. There's no hurry in getting up. When you've been down on your head, you don't wanna just hop right up, give yourself a headache, take your time, sit up slowly, especially when you're very new to headstands, go slow as you come up. Hero's pose is always a nice place to kind of transition with. Let's go ahead and try it again with the bound headstand. I'll show you tripod in a moment. And let's just see if we can pull both knees both thighs into the belly and just hover the toes a little bit. We don't have to straighten the legs. When you straighten the legs and you lift them towards the ceilings, that's when people get spooked. That's when they get scared and they fall and they stumble forward. So just, just, let's just get the toes off the ground and see how that feels. Find your basket, thumbs open, pinkies together, place the crown of your head down. Don't let the elbows flail out. That's the thing I always see people doing wrong in their Ashtanga class when they do their headstand. They start with their elbows, shoulders width, they go to go up to their headstand and they get this wide base. Now you don't have the same strength you did. They have to stay at the shoulder's width. And if they're not staying at shoulder's width, you may need to work on straightening or strengthening your lats. So that's something to think about. But keep the elbows in. You could use a block if you're not used to keeping things at shoulder's width. That would keep you there. And I could keep squeezing that block with my elbows. That's an option. I don't really want something in my way personally, but you may like that. So I'm gonna put my head in my basket, keep my elbows, shoulders width, tuck the toes, lift the knees, straighten the legs. Let's pull the left knee in, push out of those elbows and shoulders. Let's pull the other knee in, just, just here. Think compression, think push. Try to think about pushing out of the entire forearm, not just into the crown of the head. And then as you feel more comfortable here, I'm gonna come down for a moment. As you feel more comfortable in your headstand and you've had both knees pulled in, you're like, Kelsey, I'm super stable there. Then work on straightening the legs one at a time. Because once you get both up, you're gonna feel almost weightless as you stack the hips over the shoulders, the knees over the hips, the ankles over the knees, and you get this nice straight line. Oh, you almost start to feel this weightless position and it can be a little spooky when you're not used to it. So go very slow, follow your breath and really observe what you're feeling. And if you start to feel that spooked position and you're going to roll, tuck your chin, right? Tuck your chin and roll out of it. That way you don't hurt your neck or your spine or nice and easy, calm down. Oh, something I will mention too, and my teacher always tells me this, no jumping into headstand. I've seen so many people try to jump into a headstand. I'll, I'll give you a little demo. And likelihood is you're going to over jump and you're going to fall. So if you're not having the strength of the core to lift the legs, then you're not really ready for headstand yet. So in headstand, if you have to do that, <laughs> then you're not ready yet. Find a lower position um, that will help support you to get strength for your headstand, like dolphin pose or plank pose. And, and work on your core strength and then come back to your headstand. All right, so let's work on lifting one leg at a time. So I got my basket, crown of the head down, elbows are in at shoulders width, hips are up, 
Let's pull the knees in. Oh, I've got my balance. Push, push, push out of the shoulders and the whole forearm. Let's straighten one leg. Really point that toe, find that leg. Keep pulling the bent knee in towards the belly. Let's switch. Knee down first, and then straighten the other leg. I'm thinking of stacking all my bones. Really everything is engaged. Pushing out of the shoulders. Let's try both, nice and slow. I have my gaze fixed behind me, locking in on just one thing. Engage your butt, squeeze the legs towards each other, push out of the shoulders. So here, I'm dumping in the shoulders. Now I'm pushing. Reach into the toes, tuck your pelvis underneath you. Let's come down with slow control. Start to bend the knees. Let the toes nice and carefully come to the ground. Rest in child's pose for a moment. Again, we never want to strain the neck. Sitting up slowly, please take your time. If you feel dizzy, you get that like blackness in front of your vision. Obviously we need more water, but you need to move a little bit slower, so please honor that. The other way to work in your headstand, and you may find this one a little bit easier, is working in tripod. So tripod, we have the hands down and the crown of the head down. So there's no holding the head, just the hands are on the floor helping you find balance. And sometimes that's nice because now you have three points to really grip into the ground and not just the one. So when you have your head down for headstand, you should be able to see all 10 fingers making a nice triangle. You don't want to like this or way out here. Elbows in, shoulders width. And this is a nice one to practice with because we can climb the knees onto the triceps, kind of like we're in crow pose, a nice place to feel our strength before we start to lift the legs. Of course, making sure that you work in both sides before you get both up. You know, and take your time. You don't have to just shoot the legs up fast. From here, okay, make sure that you're bending the elbows in. Don't let them flare out. Still see your fingers. Push out of the shoulders. Reach into the toes. Strong core, strong back. Strong butt, legs are engaged. Let's comb down nice and slow. Slow, slow, slow. Always working that reversal. Exhale into child's pose. Kind of nice and easy. Getting the head back up over the hips. If you feel a headache, then you'll know next time you've got to move a little bit slower. All right, so those are two different examples of ways that you can work on your headstand and hopefully find a little bit of strength there. What do I have next? Oh, my favorite, forearm stand. I love forearm stand. It's such a nice way to find strength through the upper body, build that upside down awareness of what's happening in space. And also, really, it's a good um, prerequisite for a handstand. So if handstand is something that you wanna work on, really work on nailing that forearm stand first. So I see a lot of people do it with the hands bound. And while that's okay, and there's no right or wrong to how you wanna do your yoga, I again really like hands flat because then you can grip the ground if you need to. So from here, grab opposite elbow, right? And then palms down. If you are not sure that you can keep the elbows at this shoulder's width, there's your block again. Put it down on the ground. And for almost everybody, a block is shoulder's width. So then you can keep squeezing that block with your elbows. That way you know they keep drawing in towards each other. You are welcome to do that. I don't really love a block. I feel like it's a distraction for me, but I see a lot of people use it and they really, really love it. If you're also having a very hard time keeping your elbows together and they keep wanting to flare out, you can use a strap. You can take a strap and make it the same width as your shoulders, wrap it around your triceps and you'll be able to keep it there. Now, the only thing I don't love about that, and I think I've mentioned it before, is that once you have that strap wrapped around your triceps, you're really locked into it. It's not gonna come off for you. So if you feel like you're gonna fall, it's kind of hard to fall with a strap on. And I think knowing how to fall and feeling like you can fall safely is super, super important. So if you're working on your forearm stand, get that shoulder with palms down flat or interlace the fingers if that's necessary to activate the shoulders. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, and eventually we're gonna get both legs up, but for now, 
Let's lift the right leg. We want to get a lot of height through that right leg. Maybe come all the way up onto the tippy toe on that left side. Let's count for 10. 10, 9, keep pushing. 8, 7, gaze is slightly forward. 6, 5, belly in. 4, 3, 2, 1. Right leg down. Lower to the knees for just a moment. And we're going to do the second side. So keep the arms right where they are. Tuck those toes, lift the hips. Let's lift the left leg as high as we can. So we're kind of in a dolphin uh, splits here. Let's get a little shift forward. So I'm hopping forward on my right toes to really get that shift. Let's count down 10, nine, keep pushing out of the shoulders. Eight, seven, six, five. Legs are really engaged. Four, three, don't let the elbows flail out. Three, two, and one. So working in dolphin, is an amazing way to build strength for your Pinchamayarasana, your forearm stand. Another thing that you can do, and I do have a video here on YouTube, is use the wall. So when you find that forearm stand, kick one leg into the wall to help you find a little balance, to find your hover. But we're not doing that today. Today is just a very quick little intro. So let's work on finding a little bit of air. Forearms back down, grab opposite elbow, palms flat. Tuck the toes, lift the hips. All right, left leg up first. Let's just find a couple little hops. Let's do five on each side. So pushing off the balls of the toes. And what I want you to think about is very, very quiet little flats, floats. So we're not doing this. You see what I'm saying? Balls of the toes, quiet, quiet. Keep pushing out of those shoulders. Lift into those left toes. Let's switch sides. Left toes down, right float up. I'm gonna shift forward. Don't let the elbows open, right? Quiet, little hops. This is why you need those hamstrings open and the hips open. Let's do two more. Last one and back down. Now this is a nice place to either rest in uh, child's pose or in embryo. Arms back by the sides. A nicer way to kind of soften and relax the shoulders. <sighs> calm your breath, calm your mind. <sighs> All right, so if you are not ready to find your balance and forearm stand, like I said, you can kick off the wall that will help you find the strength through the upper body, but the wall holds the balance for you. But if you are ready to find a little bit of balance and forearm stand, then these are some great positions to hang out with before you go to straight legs. So in my opinion, straight legs is one of the hardest ones to hang out with because you really have to stack everything up, a lot of awareness. So instead of moving right into straight legs, what I would encourage you to do is to play with either splits or stab legs. So in splits, let's kick one leg up and you have a nice teeter-totter to help you find the balance. You can also bend the knees and by having the knees bent, my right leg here is pulling in towards my core, helping me to activate my core so that I can find my balance. Gaze is down between my forearms, and these stag legs are giving me, again, that teeter-totter so I can balance here. And the nice thing about that is once you have found a place that you can balance with for more than just five to 10 seconds, you can really stay there and explore. You can start really thinking about all those fine little details. Are my hips tucked underneath me? Is my butt engaged? Are the legs internally rotated and lifting towards the ceiling? Am I pushing out of the shoulders? Am I protracting out of the shoulder blades? So being able to stay there for longer periods of time is super, super useful because now you can start to notice all the little details, all the little things that we need to really focus on to make those balances stick and stay. All right, what do we got next? Shoulder pressure pose. So I have this written down as my last one. If I think of something else, we might go a little longer. Otherwise, we'll be wrapping it up soon. Now, I really like shoulder pressure pose because it's also called um, Bhuja Padasana in Ashtanga, and it's because it's the beginner posture for Firefly. So for this one, both hamstrings and the, sh and the hips have to be super, super open. So we're gonna hang both legs over the triceps this time. Both legs go up, 
There we go. And hands are a bit wider than they normally would be for say a plank pose or for a handstand. So you have to squeeze the legs over those triceps, don't let them fall down. You have to round the back, low belly pulls in, press into the heel of the hand, shift forward, maybe a little bump up, hold, and lower back down. Let's do that a couple of times. You may have to adjust the legs as they may slide down the triceps, that's not uncommon. The more you hang out here, the easier it will be for you to uh, keep the legs where they need to stay. I will say leggings help with that. If you have bare legs, like with shorts, and you get some sweat involved, they just slide right down. So get your hands down flat, pull the belly in, a little round of the spine, rock, shift forward, push into the heel of the hand, push. Let's do that a couple times, four more. Rock, push. If the feet come down like this, no worries. That's all right, we're still building that strength through the upper body. One more, let's hold. Woo, just kidding. Now one more, let's hold. It's okay to fail, to fall. We have to be all right with that. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And from here, the next part would be to cross the ankles and squeeze the shoulders. And that's where you get that shoulder pressure. Name from after you can cross the ankles. The next phase is to send the legs back and uh, maybe bring the chin to the floor. So that is Bhuja Padasana, shoulder pressure pose. And once that gets a little bit easier and those hamstrings are really, really open, then maybe you can take it into your firefly pose. So I will show you that just like I did the eight angle. Don't feel rushed into doing it. Take your time. First master your elephant trunk and master your uh, shoulder pressure pose. And then you can talk about doing your full eight angle pose and doing your full firefly. So once we come into that shoulder pressure and we have the legs up, now we can lift the ankles as well. So that's your firefly pose. And maybe that will come with time. So let me make sure I went over everything I did. Hopefully that gives you a really good insight to some of your very beginner arm balances in yoga, like your tripod, like your crow pose and your baby crow. If I didn't hit one of the postures that you've really been wanting to work on, please leave me a comment down in the comment section. I wanna teach you how to get on your hands because I know that you can do it if you just keep showing up and believing in yourself. Make sure that you follow me on TikTok and on Instagram so that you can get little bit little bit shorter versions rather than these longer videos. I hope you enjoyed this today, guys. Take care. Drink your water. Be good to each other. Namaste.